Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I seem to be on a total roll today. I just did my video for the giveaway. If you haven't seen that yet, go and enter your name. Um, but in this video, I wanted to do a little um, stash overview. I don't think I'm going to show all the charts I have because uh, while they're not that many, it'll probably take a while to go through them. And I kind of have more like um, uh, themes that I like to collect, so I'll probably show you those. I'll definitely show you my favorites. So um, I recently reorganized everything and managed to fit them into two boxes. So there is this big box here, which is basically my kitted up things and then a smaller box like this, which is quite heavy because uh, that's all charts. So I'll go through them and uh, show you my goodies and I'm really excited to share these with you because I personally love stash videos. I love to see what uh, people are working on, but I also love to see you know what you have in your stash and I will be enabled. And that's actually how a lot a lot of, a lot of these ended up here because I'm so easily enabled. It's It's ridiculous actually. So these are basically my paper charts because um, I do buy some PDF charts, um, but I generally just keep them in my Google Drive. And um, when I buy PDF charts, I tend to only buy what I'm going to stitch right away, um, unless it's something like Love Thy Thread where Beth went out of business. So I bought a few there just in case because I do want to stitch those one day, but I'm not going to show those because there's really not that many. So let's start with my kits. Let's see. Here is one that a lot of you might not have seen. It is a Victorian Christmas kit of a beautiful um, Christmas ball ornament. Um, and, and it's not an actual ornament, just a stitched one. And um, it comes with all the silk threads and the um, linen and the beads. And it's full of specialty stitches. It's in a very nice little booklet that is very well explained and I got this from um, the Crazy Canuck Crafters um, Facebook group. Um, I don't know if she still has any left because I don't see her in albums but I'm very excited to stitch this one up. It's just a beautiful little Christmas ball. Um, I think it looks very classy so I definitely want to um, stitch this up for this Christmas and put it up on the wall. So the other one I have um, is my actually my favorite Teresa Wensler pattern. I'm not a big fan of the mermaids and the fairies and the dragons and things like that, but her English Garden Sampler, which you can see here, I think it's just beautiful. It reminds me of um, you know the level of detail and the specialty stitches. It reminds me a little bit of Chatelaine's, but not as Compli compli I want to say complicated because um, this is the first time I ever purchased a pattern that had so many instructions because I'm used to buying patterns that are fully stitched with just regular cross stitches like similar to a heaven and earth design um, although I've never stitched a hate before but you know like my octopus kit and my other um, projects they're basically full stitches but maybe some back stitch if that and the instructions are basically you know one paragraph you know stitch as charted this one has an entire booklet telling you about different sections and borders and like i'm not going to show you the inside um but you know every single piece of element in here has special instructions and I found it a little bit daunting uh, when I first got it, um, but I still decided to kit it up because I really love it and I would love to stitch it. So here is my kit. Um, I got everything I need. So I got all the DMC flosses. I got the pearl threads for the hardangery part. Um, I got the Mill Hill beads as well as the uh, Krennics that are somewhere in here and um, a cream colored um, Lugana or white color Lugana for it. So one day I will stitch this up. Um, it's going to be a huge project so I'll have to like knock something off my finish list first. The other thing I have here is um, the Croaking Tote Manor 
from Praiseworthy Stitches and um, a lot of these I bought from like these dash groups on Facebook really and I'm gonna take it out of the bag so you can see it better so here's the pattern I love it how it had um, all these different um, elements in it there's like the kids trick-or-treating and then you have the little ghosties and then the ravens and the cats and then the pumpkin card and I also like the gate in this and then best of all it came with a beautiful beautiful piece of fabric that was specially dyed for it I don't know if you can see it because really cameras are notoriously bad at capturing fabrics so I'll have to uh, check this footage later and I maybe have to take an actual picture and insert it but it's a beautiful purple uh, dark purple with lighter purples it's op opalescent and it's just a beautiful piece of fabric um, so I I would love to stitch this one day I don't really have that many Halloween patterns I think this is the one of two Halloween patterns I have but it's still a really huge project and um, as you know huge projects take a while to do and I don't know if I will have time to do this one for this Halloween we'll see it also comes with really adorable buttons by uh, just another button company so there is uh, Frankenstein there is um, headstones pumpkins and bats and all that so I thought that was adorable all right next ones I have that I also kitted up is a pattern um, by Tempting Tangles Designs and it's called Autumn Nodding Over Yellow Plain and something about that particular line from like an old English poem I guess really captures my imagination and the fact that it has a fox in the foreground and um, some black sheep and some birds and it's just is really I don't know I, I feel this could be a children's storybook and this could be art for it autumn nodding over the yellow plain something with a fox chasing a squirrel and I could just write an entire little story about this and you know the sky is setting um, you can see it in the clouds so I really really love this pattern and I kitted it up right away here are all my threads all my DMC's for it it does call for DMC's which is great um, I don't have a piece of fabric for it yet um, but I'm thinking most likely a off-white kind of piece of fabric um, so that it matches what um, the stitch image is but we'll see so together with that I also got um, and kitted up the ink circles little alien schoolgirl sampler I love this as a geek and a nerd and all those things uh, I think the idea of a sampler from the perspective of, of an alien schoolgirl is hilarious and um, while I don't recognize all the symbols in there uh, she does provide a really good explanation of what they all are I think it's um, super fun and I had a chance to see it in person at my um, at a creative festival last fall so I'm very excited to start this as well um, I already have the piece of fabric and everything picked out plus I have all the DMC threads um, I didn't want to go through the effort or the expense of getting I think was it week, week dye work or something that, that it uh, could also be um, let me just double check yeah week dyes week dye works I didn't want to go through the trouble but I did find some um, hand dyed floss from my existing stash of stranded by the sea floss that I am going to substitute uh, for some of the colors in this sampler so um, I guess I'll get have I'll have some of the uh, variegation um, um, anyways this is definitely one of them that I want to start really really soon all right so let's see what else is in here okay so there is here um, from the drawn the drawn thread it's their random thoughts sampler I guess it has a lot of specialty stitches and I like it because it comes with the fabric and the floss already so I didn't have to worry about it um, 
Again, something I want to do something uh, someday, but it also has some hardanger, which I've never tried before, so it's going to go a little bit at the bottom of the pile. Um, let's see. I also, here's another piece of hardanger. Um, this is the green earth sampler. Um, and then here's the fresh air sampler. So they both come with the um, accessory pack that has the silk floss and the uh, metallics, I guess. I really like these two, so one day again, when I get around to learning Hardanger, I'll do those. Um, that's great to me. I, I have one more kit, and that's a, a kit from European Cross Stitch. This is the um, Alpine Meadows Garden from um, Chatelaine, and it's on the list of chatelaines I would love to stitch, but I wasn't planning on buying this until someone was de-stashing her chatelaine kits and um, she was offering an amazing deal, especially since these have the needlepoint silks um, included. So it's all silks, no DMCs, um, with all the beads and the fabric and um, yeah, so I just said yes, please take my credit card and hand over this kit. So it's in my stash. Um, I don't have any immediate plans yet to stitch it. Um, I don't think I'm even going to stitch it after my current Chatelaine, the Holland Springtime Mandala. Um, I might, I have, I, I really want to stitch the mystery, the big blue sea or deep blue sea. Um, and then I'm also really interested in the Rainforest Mandala that she's going to release sometime this year. So this will be at least a year or two away, but I'm, I'm really treasuring it and uh, keeping it safe. So then the rest of them are not really kits. Oh, well, I have one here that I guess I could show. This is a uh, kit I purchased in China years ago before I even really started cross-stitching. Um, I purchased it but I never used it and then a year later I, I, I did my first cross stitch with the um, what's it called again the um, Game of Thrones um, bookmarks so it's a really beautiful cherry blossom um, branch and um, it's a full kit it comes with 14 count Ada and all the floss you need um, but it is like unlike the current kits you see a lot um, it's not printed on. It actually has a booklet with a chart and you have to follow the chart like how we do with a regular cross stitch. Um, so I haven't started it yet. I don't know if I'm really gonna start it because it's not something that I'm gonna put up on my wall and um, I don't know if I'm willing to stitch it for anyone really because it's still a big, big piece of um, cross stitch and it's gonna be a lot of work. So I'm just keeping it in my stash for now. So some other, now that's basically all the things that I have kitted up. Really, it's not that many. Um, I try not to kit up things until I'm pretty sure that I want to start it soon-ish. So um, that helps with, you know, keeping my buying impulses in check. But I do have a lot of patterns. So some of my favorite patterns are in this pile. So let's go through them quickly. Um, I love the told in a garden patterns. Um, I was lucky enough to buy a bundle of um, a D stasher. So I already opened one because I was so, I couldn't wait. So this is the farmer's market. I think they're adorable. Um, you know, going back to a time when that, that no longer is. Um, the brown Swiss arm, brown Swiss dairy. Home of a quilter. I'm not a quilter, nor do I really know anyone um, in person that I'm close to who is a quilter, but I would, I'll definitely stitch that. Bird in hand. Raspberry homecoming. And then blueberry homecoming because I couldn't choose between those two. If I had to choose though, I think blueberries are more my favorite fruit compared to uh, raspberries, but they're both really good. So then, um, I waffled on the whole Mirabilia stitch along thing, and in the end I decided not to, just because that 
I don't really do stitch alongs. I don't like stitch alongs um, personally because I don't work that way. If I want to stitch something, I stitch it. And uh, even if I was participating in a stitch along, um, I, I'm not inclined to post updates of my project. Um, just doesn't really work for me. I don't do rotations either. That's the same reason because I stitch basically whatever I want and I don't want to feel restricted by any sort of uh, rules or, you know, any sort of social obligations to other people. But I did spend a lot of time looking at memorabilia patterns, which, you know, you really can't get away from that, but, you know, the proliferation of, like, memorabilia on FlossTube as well as on Facebook. So, um, I, I have my top three favorites. Two of them I have now. Um, so my top three are in no particular order at the Met. As soon as that came out, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. She is so classy and sophisticated. And she reminds me of um, this Australian TV show and uh, mystery novel uh, called Franny Fisher. Uh, it, it just freaking looks like her from the TV show. And I love the show. I think it's an amazing show. Um, so that's definitely um, one of my favorite mirabilias, although I don't have the pattern yet. The other two are Persephone. I especially love her because of the color of her dress. I love her name. I love the story that goes with Persephone, as well as the wallpaper in the back and background. It's just a beautiful, beautiful pattern. And then my third um, favorite well, not third favorite, but, you know, one of my top three contenders for Mirabilia is the Stargazer. I see this one once in a while. It's an older pattern. Um, but what I specifically love about this pattern is, A, the position of her head and the way she looks up to the sky and all the beautiful stars that are um, in the sky. Um, I'm not, to be honest, I, I don't really like her color. Her color palette, it's a little bit muted for me, and I wish she had something bright as a uh, accent at least. So maybe, maybe I will uh, rechart this in different colors, but, you know, don't hold me to it. And the last mirabilia pattern I have is Sleeping Beauty. Um, I think she's okay. Um, she's not my favorite, but um, it was, I, I purchased it together with some other patterns, and I thought it was pretty good. Um, yeah, it's a pretty nice pattern. So then I also have here a printout of my Northern Expression Needleworks Twisted Rainbow Sampler, which is a companion to the Twisted Band Sampler I'm stitching right now. I will do that one day too. And now I have a, co selection, a collection of my Hawk Ron Hollow charts. I love these charts. Ever since I saw them, I really want to stitch one of them. And um, if you've ever looked them up, they're fairly expensive. They're close to like $25, $30 for the chart itself, which was like, whoa, are you kidding me? But, you know, they're, they're like in these panels, and there's like, I think, 12 panels per pattern. And each panel is basically one full chart, really. So if you look at it, it is, you know, the price is, the value is there. But I was lucky enough to get them from Adista Ash. And these are the ones I have. The Shores of Hogron Hollow, which might be my favorite. Um, especially because it has mermaids and it has whales and uh, boats. And yeah, there's even a little octopus in there. And then the little moon over there with all the different motifs um, in the moon. I just think this is an amazing chart. And then there is the Houses of Hawk Run Hollow, which is a um, very much primitive style, I think. Maybe not quite primitive, but like the houses. You see that a lot in samplers. And then um, there's a Village of Hawk Run Hollow. So beautiful charts. Um, they're all charted for needlepoint silks or DMC. And... Um, I'll start one of these soon. I don't know which one yet, but uh, very soon. And um, probably DMC, but maybe I'll go crazy and I'll get silks. Who knows? So another favorite designer of mine is Ink Circles. And I 
actually when I look at it I have a lot of her patterns I have the 99 bottles which uh, Andrew is stitching on I have the squid one which I'm stitching right now and then on top of that I have three more of her patterns uh, the first one here is peace wheel um, I actually won this pattern from Mel at CrossStitchReview.com. Um, I was so surprised because I've never won anything before. This is like the first time I won, I won something. And it's a pattern. I, I mean, I only entered because I love the pattern. I really want to stitch it because um, I don't, I don't, I personally don't enter for things that I don't like or don't want to stitch because I'm trying to not buy like not have as many things in, in, in my place because my place is already small and there's two of us here so we need to like de-stash instead of like acquire more stuff but I really do love this pattern um, I might I will definitely change the colors though because um, this purpley greenish is really not my style so I'll probably change it to something blue and orange because I love those colors together um, so stitching that one soon as well and then I also have the Ink Circles Hanky Pisanky, which um, is beautiful. I mean, it's a reference to the, um, it's inspired by the Ukrainian eggs um, and the sort of uh, geometrical patterns they draw on it. And I could never do it with the eggs because I really don't have that steady hand or creativity to like make up these um, beautiful lines. But um, this pattern is gorgeous. I just need to figure out a way what colors I want because um, I'm not really fond of these colors again. And it's probably because these are warm colors and I'm, I'm more into the cooler uh, color palettes. But one of the, these beautiful patterns that I definitely want to stitch. And then possibly my favorite ink circles, the, cir the circles, which you've seen before. Um, and... I'm really itching to stitch this one and because uh, I think it was a Trisha Trisha who started this I think it's this one anyways it's one of these um, ink circles patterns with like circles she started it with this beautiful purple and I am so itching to start this um, the only thing really stopping me is that a I don't really, I can't, I don't know what color and fabric I want to stitch this on. So until I make up my mind, it's not going to happen. But I think there will be a Google image session where I just go through all the variations that people have stitched and try to make up my mind what I want to do. So um, the next batch is something that I was enabled to by um, the cross stitch review forum. Uh, blog. Um, I think every Tuesday they post about a um, old designer, so someone who's been around for a while, uh, some a designer that you know some of the newcomers like me might not be familiar with. Uh, some of them are actually discontinued or no longer in business. So one of them was Terence Nolan and his collection of like Profes Professor of Fisbee's wondrous strange collection of creatures um, and I instantly fell in love but obviously you can't buy them anymore and you can't even find them a lot on eBay but somehow over the you know over the course of the next few weeks I was lucky enough to find them for sale in various D stashes on Facebook so I snapped them up so fast because I absolutely love these this is the ladybug collection they are amazing. They are so lifelike and all they use is DMC and some Krennic and um, they're just so amazing. I don't know if they're actually stitched over one or over two. I don't care. I will stitch it over one if I have to. Um, but there's these four different ladybugs and then there are these, the bee collection. Look at them. Look at the colors. Um, you know, um, um, May, uh, Megan, Megan May, sorry if I, I totally butchered your name, um, she's stitching the uh, dragonfly for her Mirabilia, and it's just, it's a kind of similar thing where you stitch these bugs um, that are very lifelike, and they have the, sh you can almost see the shimmer of their wings, and that's what really, really attracts me to these. Um, Definitely one of these are on my to stitch pile. 
Um, I also got the butterfly. This is the, uh, let me see if I can find the name. Um, Mother of Pearl Morpho. It's just one butterfly in this particular pattern and it is just beautiful. I mean, it does use a lot of uh, different colors. I mean, I can see at least 25 colors with blended threads and crinics for this one pattern. But I guess that's how you get the very delicate butterfly wing effect. And then there's like two more. There is a, a Monarch and a Viceroy butterfly in this one as well. And again, I just feel so fortunate that I was able to find these on the Facebook these stashes. I will treasure them forever. Um, and I don't think I could ever let them go. And then again, there's a few more Wee Beasties. Um, these are the, um, um, what's it called? Ladybugs. Yeah. So I can't wait to stitch one of these. The hottest one hottest decision for me would be to decide which ones I want to stitch first. Um, it's on my two stitch pile for sure. And there's, the, there's this one uh, for Amelia, wherever she may go. I think this one is actually still available on some websites. Um, yeah, so this one uses uh, beads as well and Krennic Silk Mori. So it's a little bit different from the regular, um, his other charts which usually most, uh, which mostly use DMCs. And then there's this very whimsical one. I wasn't really aware about this particular series. Um, it's the Bright and the Shroom. I don't know about you, but I love little word jokes like that. They're so corny, but I think they're hilarious. So the Bright and the Shroom. So yeah, very cute. Um, I will stitch that one day too. Had lots of little small beads at the top as well. So yeah, so that's my little Terrence Nolan's collection, which I'll never let go, and I'm so happy that I found them. So I'm going to stop here. Um, these are like basically the kits I have, and um, some of my more favorite charts. I have a whole lot more, uh, mostly samplers. I love samplers. I haven't stitched one yet. Um, so maybe I should do a different video and just show you what I really, really want to stitch next. Um, and maybe my stitchy goals for the year. Um, you know, I have, I have some big projects that I really need to like um, get done. 